you've heard a lot about EuroHealthy and you've seen some of the products, um, and a lot of work has gone into creating these products by each of the 15 universities and the work packages. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have enough time for you to hear the rich detail of how they develop their methods, but you will get an overview of each of the work packages and some of the results and the implications of their findings for the issues that were raised in the first part of the program. And what about recommendations? Um, the main recommendations are, uh, in this case is re are related with data quality. And we can see that, um, in general, there are uh, good indicators at country level. Sometimes there are good indicators at regional level, but it's very difficult to find uh, indicators for smaller areas, and mainly uh, to have indicators inside the cities for districts, neighborhoods, and then to obtain these kind of indicators, it's necessary to ask the cities to provide them. And this is a limitation if everybody, if everyone wants to study several cities of Europe. And uh, then I think that this is one of the, of the most important uh, recommendations. And an uh, another one is related with some specific aspects of some indicator, as for example, for education, um, early livers, people uh, who leave the education, are not usually observed as a specific category, for example. Um, for demographic change, um, indicators usually exist, but there are no specificities of them. For example, uh, for migration, we don't know, we don't have important, for example, important aspects as the reasons of migration, or uh, other indicators that can influence health of these people. And the same for aging. We don't know, for, for example, sometimes poverty for the, for the older population. And related to lifestyles, it's important to say that we have information on lifestyles at country level based on health interview surveys or health surveys. But when we want to have information at a lower level, also it's very difficult. You, you need to have specific uh, surveys for cities or for metropolitan areas. And the last one is the recommendation regarding inequalities. This um, our work package has found that inequalities exist in several cities. For one, cities are more important than others, but these inequalities seem not to have changed after the starting of the crisis. We have to wait more years to have more information, but at this moment we, don't, we do not see changes. And um, we have a recommendation uh, about the necessity, the, the importance of tackling inequalities in health and mainly of implementing uh, health in all policies in order to have, uh, the, to have the involvement of the different sectors of the cities, because we are, uh, in this work package, we are mainly talking uh, about cities. The different parts of the government of the city should be involved in the health sector in order to improve determinants of health and health outcomes. So, the final step and for me and my presentation, the recommendations from this uh, work. Yep. <laughs> um, certainly, through this process, we have identified a process, um, a method, a methodology, which is the quantification of the health effects which are associated with uh, the environmental conditions across and also within the metropolitan areas. Uh, we believe that through this process, uh, the most important uh, environmental indicators that came up and that need to be considered for policy making at city level are related to air pollution, urban green spaces, and also road safety. So the significant actually variability of those indicators um, across and within the uh, metropolitan areas indicate that they may be also related to environmental health in inequalities. More specifically, air pollution was associated with really high estimates of attributable mortality, and we believe that interventions can help on a city level to reduce this mortality. Uh, certainly, the, evaluation, the evolution of the road safety indicators show that uh, the road accidents 
were decreased over time, but uh, certainly more work in terms of, of interventions need to be done in order to reduce to the minimum. And uh, we have already discussed the positive impact of the urban green spaces on population health, which actually highlight the importance uh, in order to be included in any policy making in order to uh, develop uh, healthy environments. This analysis led us to propose some recommendation the importance of preventable deaths and the trend observed for this cause of death invite us to confirm the necessity to focus on social determinant of health in order to reduce regional disparities. Reflection to improve social and territorial cohesion in the field of education, employment, transport, access to service are the best way to, to tackle the, these inequalities. In this way, this this analysis allows to focus on intermediate regions composed by small and medium cities in decline or in difficulties of development in the face of the restructuring industrial employment. The concentration of specialized uh, care services to the metropolitan areas, the increasing increasing uh, dependency of these small and medium cities, the difficulties of reconversion after industrial crisis are making a part of these um, intermediate regions more fragile. We also observe growing disparities in these intermediate areas for preventable mortality. These results imply to develop tools for health observatory observation for small and medium cities, complementary with analysis in major cities or metropolitan areas. The priorities uh, for addressing health inequalities in each type of region are different also. For metro metropolitan regions, the the emphasis should be on the gradual harmonization of the healthcare framework on a growing interest in addressing intra-urban inequalities, while for intermediate uh, and peripheral regions, it's necessary to find the levers to make these regions more connected and more attractive with the metropolitan regions. And we have two, um, two groups also of recommendations. First one is to continue to involve the most we can the, the main decision agents, uh, stakeholders, researchers, policy makers and citizens uh, in order to, to reflect their views in the, in, the, in the values and as the main goal of this, of this um, index is to support policy decision making. Regarding the knowledge the knowledge transfer. We have a measurement of health inequalities. We have a urgent need uh, for data collection. Um, more effective, more, more efforts have to be done um, in collecting uh, more reliable data. And finally, uh, we we as a result of this project, as you has been announced before, uh, is the WebGIS, and we recommend also the use of it in, in, in your decisions. Giving a couple examples, the weights of the population health model uh, are weights that uh, were built with, uh, in a way, so that they capture the extent which, if one reduces health inequalities in Europe, how important is to close the gap. Second uh, characteristic uh, or recommendation is that uh, it is possible to effectively combine evidence. In health, evidence means a lot, uh, but uh, it's also uh, we need to have experts and stakeholders uh, analyzing that evidence and interpreting that evidence in all the areas. So what we have done to construct the Population Health Index for scenario building and for policies evaluation was to design uh, methods and tools so that we could implement uh, web-based formats to interact 
uh, with a larger number of people with face-to-face -face formats so that across uh, I think that here the key issue is that uh, to have this type of tools it's quite important to combine evidence or in the case of scenarios of future oriented evidence with uh, a large and richer number of people interacting in non-face-to-face -face formats and of course because nothing replaces to have a smaller number of people also discussing uh, these processes that combine these stages that evidence and larger stakeholder and expert opinion to, to inform a smaller strategic group that tries to discuss the collected information, the meaning and to finalize the construction of the model, of the population model, and also of the scenarios. When we are going for the evaluation of policies on a common and transparent basis, it is quite important to make use of scenarios. So we are speaking about uh, um, policies. They have impacts in future. And the way we approach it in, within the EuroHealthy project was first to develop scenarios uh, that uh, in some way, first thing was to build extreme but plausible scenarios. So these scenarios were built in a way to inform first the external, the external forces that may affect the evolution of population health uh, across regions in the future. Uh, and second, the, they were taken as informative to the evaluation of policies. Regarding these things, we have uh, uh, we obtained two scenarios for taken for, for sure from our stakeholders and experts. A failing Europe scenario, that means that uh, it can be that the political project does not uh, succeed, we don't have economic growth, uh, there are social tensions in the European Union, it will be very bad to, uh, uh, to population health and we have a, a best uh, extreme plausible scenario of sustainable prosperity in the same way the opposite or it is the opposite in sense that economic growth and uh, a good uh, European project that's been developed. Um, recommendations. First recommendation is for using the full potential of the Population Health Index for policy analysis and decision support, the database of continu continuously updated indicators on the NUTS2 level needs to be extended in all dimensions that are included in the PHI. And again, I, I refer to Marlene that uh, this is really something getting better data spe specifically on the regional level and more continuous data is um, a really important issue for us. Second recommendation is reporting on and monitoring of the interventions under the European structural investment funds need further improvement to allow for continuous evaluations of the success of funded interventions in all target regions by instruments like the one we have been presenting today to you. So again, we need better instruments to uh, really monitor this important um, tool for, for the European Union to um, contribute to health equity. Third recommendation is, while the rationale for health in all policies is well established, the tools for assessing especially non-health related policies need further improvement. This means that um, we really need to um, translate health in all policies not only into policy making but really also to further develop the tools to analyze these interventions and get a better understanding of co-benefits or um, indirect health um, consequences. The fourth recommendation is to support both policy development and continuous, continuous progress evaluation for the SDG agenda and the new urban agenda the PHI should be applied and further developed. So again, this is an excellent tool we think to um, further develop these issues and the last recommendation to further develop the PHI in practice and to support the framing and implementation of policies in the context of the European pillars of social rights and its current two key principles. We recommend the PHI as one planning and evaluation instrument. And I think in this project we've seen uh, a number of ideas so I want to, um, I want to highlight uh, a few general themes, general principles. So the most obvious principle, I think, is the idea of uh, visualization. 
of spatial visualization. So perhaps that's no surprise this project has been led by um, a, a geography department, by a health geographer. Um, but one of the things which I think this project demonstrates really powerfully, and it's been commented on from the floor as well, is the, um, the power of spatial visualization. Um, not just in engaging people, but in also uh, also helping identify patterns in the data. So if you browse the atlas, and I, I hope you do, um, you'll see as you flip through the pages there are a number of things which jump out. Southwest differences, east-west, south-north differences, east-west differences. Um, so data visualization, this is a, a really powerful tool, um, a really powerful idea. But uh, as researchers, I think researchers should always be looking for ways to cut through the complexity of the problems that they're interested in studying, of the data systems um, which they're interested in analyzing, and thinking about ways in which that data can be uh, used to support decisions. And we have seen, as well as the, the visualization idea, we've seen um, a number of ideas in this project. So one is the development of a structured decision process and the demonstration of that in two cities, in Lisbon um, and in Turin. Another is um, the, um, uh, the idea of taking data, of mapping it back to risk factors, of trying to quantify on a, in a common way um, the impact associated with taking action to reduce these particular, uh, these particular risk factors, these different um, environmental health factors which impact on, on population health. Um, what else have we seen? Um, so one of the other things um, I would say, which is a way of cutting through complexity, um, is the work that Thomas talked about, where uh, you look at uh, European structural funds, so you look at uh, decisions which are actually being made and you think about, well, how can the resources that we've developed uh, improve the targeting, improve the focusing, improve the accountability around um, the use of these funds. And the last thing that I'd like to talk about, it's uh, maybe not something which is very um, sophisticated, but it is something which is very important. If you think back to uh, the videos um, at, the, uh, at the beginning, um, the qualitative interviews with the individuals, with the citizens in, um, in Turin, in Lisbon. Um, I think that's something which is also uh, really important in contextualizing um, a lot of this data, in helping researchers think about what is important, in helping policymakers, uh, in helping researchers uh, communicate to policymakers, and also. Uh, helping researchers co communicate to um, elected uh, members because it is the political representatives um, ultimately who bear the responsibility for decisions and those political representatives um, are in much more direct contact with the citizens than those of us on the research side typically, uh, typically are. So having something which enables us to hear um, the, uh, the voice of the citizen um, telling us what is important to them. Um, that's something which I think is really important as a form of decision support um, and in terms of helping us think about the value and the ultimate beneficiaries of a project like this.